Do you want to know what I do for fun? I draw gestures, study art and business, and write stuff that nobody reads. What about work? Well, for work, I do tattoos, and I run a tattoo studio for about five hours most days. Then I pick my kids up from school and play and cook and clean. Then I tuck them in, hang out with my wife, and repeat it all the next day. It looks pretty boring and mundane from the outside. So why would Josh study for fun? Isn't it hard to draw every day? Is that another fucking book in Josh's hand? (laughs) Well, yes. Yes, it is. And I love it. Because to me, my work is play. And my play helps me work. I have found what I love, and I'm letting it kill me. Just like Charles Bukowski said I should. I've defined success on my terms, so I get to study the things I love. I get to play with my kids when I feel like it, and I draw on people to make a living. I've hit a gold mine. But it took me almost 30 years to figure this shit out. I had false starts. I made really stupid decisions. I racked up a terrifying amount of student debt. And I failed several times before I said fuck it and pursued art as a full-time career. And it didn't come naturally. Ignore that idea that things come naturally or that you're talented. I still struggle to improve my craft every day, but I can focus on improving my craft because that struggle is fun. If you find a craft that you can deeply focus on, people will assume that you're a natural at it or that you're talented, but don't let their comments about talent go to your head because it's not true. You just put in more reps than the next person because you thought it was fun. And that's Stephen King's nuance on talent in On Writing. Find the things that feel easy, but look like work from the outside. Quote, When you find something at which you are talented, you do it, whatever it is, until your fingers bleed or your eyes are ready to fall out of your head. Even when no one is listening or reading or watching, every outing is a bravura performance because you as the creator are happy, end quote. So you would keep doing it because you'd do it even if you weren't getting paid. In the most extreme cases, you'd even pay to do your work because it's that fun. That sounds like a pipe dream, right? Who the hell is lucky enough to pull that off? Because happiness is a luxury that not everyone can have. I don't know. Honestly, if everyone pursued that one thing that they're great at, we might have an entirely new world. And that's Simon Sinek's mission. To flip the ratio of job satisfaction on its head. To go from... 80% of people hating their jobs to 80% of people loving the work they do. He's written a few books on it, so check out Start With Why and The Infinite Game if you want a taste of that. But why should we care about that mission? Well, first, the productivity. I mean, if you love something, you'll get good at it. If you get good at something, your output skyrockets. You can do more in less time than the next person could even dream of. So you're more valuable to society at that point if you can give the world a lot of what you're great at. Which leads to enhanced creativity. So there's number two. Let's assume that you enjoy your craft so much that you do it nonstop. 
those constant little iterations give you a place to play and experiment. Eventually, you take your craft in a direction nobody would have thought of because your experiments and fun yielded interesting results. So you learn, you test, and you apply until you've developed a creative style that's uniquely yours. Maya Angelou, renowned poet, author, and civil rights activist, was known for her love of writing and how she approached it with joy and passion. Writing was her sanctuary, her form of self-expression. In an interview with the Paris Review, Angelo said, quote, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, uh-oh, they're going to find out now. I've run a game on everybody, and they're going to find me out. End quote. 11 books. 11. <laughs> According to her biographer, writing was play for Angelo. She wrote with a childlike sense of wonder, which made her both prolific and creative in the process. Neil Gaiman's 2012 commencement speech, simply titled Make Good Art, echoes this almost identically. Uh, If you haven't watched that, I'll have a link in the description. It's one of those videos that I watch every time I need a creative kick in the ass. I don't think anyone can deny that Neil Gaiman is one of the most imaginative professionals alive today, and he is doing exactly what he loves. Which leads to the last thing, greater job satisfaction and a true sense of accomplishment. By every metric I can think of, finding something that you're great at, that you have fun doing and that people will pay you for is one of the most satisfying things you can do. Steven Spielberg probably agrees with me on this one. He has a good or bad reputation for being obsessive with his films from doing incredibly deep research for Schindler's List to working inhumanly long hours on every film he's ever directed. But let's just take a second and imagine the feeling of accomplishment he must have whenever one of his new films premieres. The only way you can maintain that level of obsession is by loving your craft. And when you love your craft, the hard work doesn't feel like hard work. It actually eliminates the need for grit. I used to think that I'd have to power through the tough stuff to get to the fun stuff. But what if that's a lie? Because I don't think that's the case. We don't need to delay gratification. When we develop an obsession, we're getting our fix by following the obsession through hell and back. We replace that need for grit with a love of the process, which gives us a sense of pride in what we're able to do. And that pride, that's not ego. That's earned confidence. Oh, that sounds really nice from the outside. But what about pulling it off? How do you do that? I say, start by experimenting with everything you ever wanted to do as a kid. Yeah, you heard right. You didn't come pre-installed with the social filter 9000. It wasn't there when you were six. That got put in when you were 11. (laughs) Or in my case, 17. 
When I was a kid, I always wanted to be an artist, and I didn't give a fuck what anyone thought about it. Until I started chasing money over passion in college. Then it took me over a decade to find myself back on track with what I really wanted to do. And that's okay. I'll, I'll talk more about that later. But here's what I'd recommend. Make a list of everything you can remember ever dreaming about doing. And even if you can't do that thing that you were dreaming of, it could help you find a new obsession. Like, if you're too old to be an astronaut, which might change soon, thanks to the billionaires. <laughs> but if you're too old to be an astronaut, you can still study the stars. So use your dreams to look at related fields. If there are current limits to your reality, this means you have to keep an open mind and try out new opportunities. You'll have to follow the rabbit holes every now and then. Boyd Vardy relates this to tracking in The Lion Tracker's Guide to Life. I think it's a really good comparison. You have to keep looking for the next thing that sparks your curiosity, then see where it leads and look for the next thing. And this is really different than most people's recommendations. To have a five-year plan and a ten-year plan, a life plan. <laughs> Make that plan and follow it. But Joseph Campbell said, if you can see your whole life's path laid out, then it's not your life's path. <laughs> so having plans, it's good. It's good for finding a direction. But then you have to follow those little curiosities to get where you're supposed to be. Sometimes it won't work out. Actually, most of the time it won't. You'll fail more often than not. But that's not wasted effort. You're refining where to look by learning where not to look, which helps find where you'll eventually go. Once you've made a choice, don't look back and don't worry if it was the wrong one. Live with the choices you've made and move forward. Don't be anxious about the choices you made in the past. Like I said, it took me 10 years. But I don't regret that. Because we're all guessing in the end. We can't see the future, which is why plans have to change. So just make your best guess and take action. Let life unfold like the experiment it is, because it's not about knowing what will happen, but discovering what will happen. There's no wasted effort in an experiment, and there's no wasted effort in finding your creative calling. So go out and find those tracks that spark your curiosity. Follow them wherever they might lead. Go at your own pace. And most importantly, have fun while you do it. <laughs> <laughs>